at first a natural grass surface. Again, this is at Cottingham. And using the existing footprint to indicate what a proposed layout might be of bleachers, of concession stands, ticket booths, you'll see it's pretty much the same footprint as exists currently. So we would be proposing demolishing the existing concrete bleacher structures on either side. I think those are to the point where um, you know, you've, you've gotten the, the life out of those uh, structures. We would propose going back in with a more um, modern sort of steel and aluminum structure on either side. Uh, in speaking with Alloy 5 and understanding the you know, historical aspect of that site, certain features such as brick accent walls, um, those types of things could be incorporated to give it more of a, you know, sort of the Cottingham historic venue type look, um, but with more of an updated uh, steel and aluminum structure. We also looked, uh, walked through the existing root uh, field house. Um, we believe it is something that can be renovated um, depending on you know, the extent of what happens inside. It's likely that that's going to be a complete gut inside with creating new um, team room spaces and also some other spaces that we talked about, including um, the, uh, the boosters, um, officials, spaces, that type of thing. Okay. We, we also understand that the layout that you see here as far as it relates to concessions, to ticket booths, even as, as late as last week, we were still talking with the district about how that can be tweaked to better, better provide circulation around the site, um, supervision of students and other people who are um, observing the game from down below as opposed to in the bleachers and really just how to better keep site circulation um, around the field. We're also looking at replacing the cinder surface with um, an asphalt surface. Um, if you would, were to take a look at the previous slide related to impervious cover, that increase in impervious cover is for the asphalt surface, okay? Again, this is a natural grass option if we were to entertain or to go with the synthetic turf option, that impervious cover is going to go up even higher, okay? And obviously that affects the stormwater and, and some other factors associated with that, okay? So again, you can see it's you know, pretty much a, a, a very similar footprint to what exists. Currently, uh, we're showing new toilet facilities um, with more fixtures, again, underneath the uh, stands on either side. We're also, in speaking with the district, talking about some other storage locations for maintenance equipment, for athletic equipment that would also be housed underneath the bleachers. Okay. Um, one thing I did want to explain is the existing Cottingham site. Um, when you think of a stadium, a lot of times you think of a track something that is not going to fit on this parcel. A PIAA size um, track and field event venue is something that is just not feasible at the 12th uh, Street location here, okay? All right, so if you wanna flip the page, the layout on the next page is pretty much identical. The, the big difference here is we included a striped field if it were to be synthetic turf. Okay, so again, understanding the limitation on number of events that can be held yearly on a natural grass field, um, there's always the option out there to go to a synthetic turf field. Okay, again, not giving direction, recommendations, but from a perspective of um, talking points tonight, keep in mind that something with a synthetic turf um, surface is going to get you a lot more annual events per year without completely beating up that field. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same as far as it relates to uh, storage, ticket booths, concessions, pretty much everything else, okay? Any questions so far? Am I going too fast, too slow? In that rendering there, does that include a, and the ability to drive under the home stands or, are we, or does that lose the opportunity? Um, we certainly could, Mr. Geiger, the, the layouts of the, um, the the proposed toilet rooms here. I'm not sure if my cursor is oh, yeah, going to okay. show up Probably or not, not. but um, those I'm sure can be adjusted 
moved inward closer towards the, um, the field so that a maintenance vehicle could go back there. We're making sure we're looking at having ambulance access around the field completely okay. as part of that Probably paved that. area, at that. least a 20 foot buffer between the, f the fence and the bleachers. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Josh, it, it, can I assume that you're shifting more towards the existing home side with this layout? Um, how, how so? In Mr. terms Kenner? of the field itself, since you have the walkway or the uh, uh, area behind those bleachers. Yeah, and we're actually uh, softening the perimeter fence. Um, okay. Currently, it's in a pretty close proximity to the corner of the end zone, so we're kind of expanding that okay. perimeter site, uh, I'm sorry, field fence accordingly. And you're seating, you and you've maintained basically the same amount of seating? Um, it's, we're actually looking at 4,000 seats on the home side, Mr. Fainel, and 1,500 on the visitor side. Home side is a little bit more than there is currently. Visitors about the same. Um, I believe that was uh, sufficient from the administration's perspective, at least as far as seating capacity. So that way you can maintain the same area while increasing the actual measurement or the size of the seats. Well, there were some discussions as far as seat, individual seat um, length or width. width. This would be assuming the more standard 18 inch width. So if that is to be adjusted, bleachers would have to either get higher or wider accordingly. Right, and I think you need to go to 22 inches. We mentioned that once before in a meeting. Any other questions so far? Okay. Um, switching gears just a little bit here, I just wanted to uh, give everybody an indication of what had come up. Actually, this was part of the Paxinosa um, design aspect, and we were looking at the site as a whole and, you know, 12th Street. Um, at one point, we were considering what can we do um, with the, the, the basketball court location and how it kind of ties into the overall uh, 12th Street and connection with the Paxinosa School. So if you look at the uh, existing parking lot behind the home side, uh, 92 existing locations with the basketball courts in the top left corner of that sketch. There's a retaining wall that goes around that site basically to keep those courts at a level, um, a level elevation. At one point we had looked at possibly reconfiguring that parking lot, shifting the location of those courts over to Vanderveer Park, um, in which case a lot of the play equipment would be lost. There's a pavilion that could still be retained, um, but that would provide more parking and a little softer elevation on the, on the western side of that parking lot, okay? Doesn't provide a tremendous amount of additional parking spaces. In fact, only about 25 or so parking spaces are created. Um, again, it was something that was discussed as part of the design of the Paxinosa and surrounding area. So I just wanted to reintroduce that idea to this committee if that's something that were to be looked at as part of a um, Cottingham renovation and possible reconfiguration of the parking lot. I have a separate line item for Again, a very preliminary budget cost for that, but um, that will be something that we can look at in the uh, cost estimate slides. How much space okay. are you picking up by shifting the basketball court down to the other end? Um, we're picking up, there are now 114 spaces uh, as opposed to 92. Eric Holden from the city of Easton does put building permits in for different activities on the basketball court throughout the summer and the school year. And on Saturdays, he does put building permits in for that. Because I was just wondering with the parking lot you got, when you tore down the modulus, how much space is over there? What, well, for parking numbers? Well, you want to put a basketball court over there. That could be a little tricky from the perspective, again, of, 
impervious surface and how much paved versus lawn area we have. And it was um, as part of the Paxanosa project, you know, it was a very, um, I won't say calculated, but the purpose of keeping green space on that parcel was very important for all the stakeholders. So I, I would hesitate to recommend introducing any more paved areas I, over I'm there. I'm curious, because how much footage are you talking about around the city and Madison being clear? Big enough for the ambulance to get by? Well, yeah, we said about 20 feet buffer is what we're going to try to keep. So that's basically about three lanes of walking lanes. Right now, if you, go, if you look at the field house, there's 10 feet from the end of the end zone to where the fence is now. And there's a big lip there. Is that going to come out? Let me just, let me just jump. So, the, so, so I'm sorry, say again. Okay, now that right we have corner where the field house is. Yep. Where the end zone stops in the field where we presently have the fence, it's approximately about 10 to 12 feet. Am I right, Jimmy? To where it ends and the fence goes. That's why we got a big pad on the corner of the stadium now. Right? It's not even, it's probably, it's about, less than that. probably about three or four feet exactly. at the most. Yeah. So that fence is coming down and that lip is coming out. Is that what you're saying? That entire big concrete lip that we have there. That concrete lip would be coming out yeah, as part of this and plan. And expand the fence out part of Well, the, the fence, I'm not sure which fence, if you mean the perimeter fence along perimeter 11th fence Street the or fence the fence the around just the field track. Track. Oh, yes, that fence would be adjusted, yes. You're going to salt all the time. Correct. That's the same. Yes. Yeah, again, be, because especially these corners back here, this that one and on the right. home side, or on, on the Paxanosa side, are very close to the edge of that end zone. Yeah, the visitor side <coughs> corners are very yeah, close. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, it's tight. That's why I wanted to make sure that's all coming out. Because you've got a huge lift there now. Yes. As you looked at this, did you, what would the consideration or cost differences be if you did a new field house as compared to keeping an existing field house? Well, you need it. From, from the standpoint, that thing's structurally sound. You got so much space in there. If you reconfigure it, it's going to save you money. Yeah, I, I could give you some, some figures, Bob, if you give me some time tonight. But I think the, the grading there is very challenging. Um, there's a retaining wall that goes down 11th Street, and if, factoring in those site costs in addition to a new building itself, I think, you know, it's, it's going to be quite a bit more. From a psychological standpoint, if we put the team down below, they got to walk up the damn hill, Bob. Just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah, we're going to open up the top, make it open up for a medical room. Coaches room and referees and what you got up there. If you make a team put them down below because you got so much space, we make them walk up the hill at halftime. Advantage of the program. They do. Yeah, if we will have to sit down the road and see how big those sections are. How do you feel about that, Harold? Yeah, I'm, I'm right with you. <laughs> Anything that can give us advantage, we already got the ghost. Let's make them walk. <laughs> Is that what other schools do to us? Yes. <laughs> yes, we got to walk and we go away. Ridiculous amount. So let's put it to them. So I just want to see how much more. Again, it's 8,000 square feet. Yeah. Double check on under asking questions. All right, so quick back of the envelope, Bob, is about $900,000. To remove it and? Additional. Josh, a question about the, 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 the new basketball courts. Could you be creative there and put some cars parked on there only on Friday nights? Is there any? Yeah. I mean, is that, a, is that an option that we could use that and how many more idea. you could possibly fit in sure. there? Sure, yeah, we could or look at that. staff parks in there to eliminate a lot of in and out because they're usually there early, like the coaches, right. and they're usually the last ones mm -hmm. to leave. So they would be locked in there for the most part, at least 
be yep. a little secluded. Yeah, we, we, but we can look at that, sure. that for another 10, 15, 20, I don't know. So we assume that that basketball surface is a mechanism surface and not a rubberized surface, right? That's all they use. Yes. Now. Yeah, we would. Okay. That's all they use nowadays, George, is blacktop. Yeah. That'd be a great idea. Are we going to maintain that? I mean, if your cars drip oil or any other chemicals onto that, you're going to maintain it if we're going to be letting people play on it? Well, Bob, I'm, I'm thinking right now that plan shows us to remove this tot lot, okay, the pavilion would say. So I'm, I'm thinking I, I, re, I move that tot lot to where that very first court is and leave it the tot lot, which would mean the pavilion would have to come down. And then move those two basketball courts over and, cor and incorporate them as part of the parking. And they wouldn't be a, a specialized service for basketball. Because um, obviously during the week when there's no events there, there's very little parking on that lot right now. Now that we've established a parking lot for the teachers that pack on that site, there's very few cars there. So they'll be able to play basketball on those two courts during the week. Now obviously Friday nights there'd be cars parked there. And it would right. be basically on the same blacktop. It would be laid out a basketball court. It wouldn't be a specialized surface for basketball. Right. And you could probably pick up, I don't know, I'm guessing another 50 spots, maybe? I kind of think yeah. it might be important to keep the tot lot intact yeah. because if like you think about it in the evenings, the community is unable to use the tot lot that's inside of packs. So in the evenings, they'd be able to still utilize the tot lot that's on the Cunningham property. And obviously during the week, they'd still be able to shoot hoops there. Okay, uh, if there are no other questions at this time for the Cottingham site, uh, we can jump over and just take a look at the high school parcel. I have one. Yes. I'm just curious, how much of the playground is being omitted or removed altogether? Based on this, again, very preliminary plan, we're pretty much taking over the entire playground up to the pavilion. So it's being removed altogether? Under this, this can be adjusted. We, we can not do it. We can cut it back. I mean. But would it be easier maybe to switch the basketball court and then get rid of the pavilion and put the tot lot in the corner part? Sure, yeah. I mean, we can, whatever the priorities and, I mean, and the uh, recommendations you know, of the district are. to what, again, because we, they can't access Paxinosis, so to be able to have that tot lot there, but then it, the parking is a little bit easier to access through the basketball courts if the tot lot would be on the side. You're talking about putting 11th Street side. What's that? Putting it at 11th Street. Well, where, where the far right basketball? At the, at the 11th Street. There's current, yeah, so currently there if are. If you put the tot lot the there and then move you know, the basketball courts we down, the you now have yeah, the parking right, right there that. Yeah. Yeah. You have a swing there's set or two there, there now. And, the parking, and, and then it's, the you know, you're not. If there would be kids there or something, they're more over to the right in the Yeah, they're not in between the two there. areas right, of park the park. Way to go with so, yeah, that's, that's way to go. Just, just switch it. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I don't know how much the pavilion is used, but. Hardly ever. So. I'd rather have a play, play area. area than, mm -hmm. than the pavilion. And, and just for safety. Safety, I think as a parent, I'd be a little bit more comfortable over here than between two areas where there's parked cars on each side. Sure, and these are all great recommendations. I mean, we don't, we don't have the answer. We're you know, <laughs> looking for discussion, but um, <laughs> we can certainly incorporate Jeez. any of those designs. You didn't look in your crystal ball, yeah, Josh. You didn't read our minds? What's Come wrong on. with you? <laughs> looking forward to the design phase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, anything else for 12th Street? Okay, again, so jumping over to um, the high school campus, we wanted to show you an overall view from 25th Street all the way to Greenwood. Um, one of the things that came out of the previous discussion was if football were to move to this location, there would need to be an additional, most likely synthetic turf um, 
playing field to accommodate some of the sports that would be displaced by the relocation of football. Mr. Pokrivsak, that is correct, right? Okay. So we were thinking the best location for that would be the soccer field, which does have, um, it's a lighted field. It's, uh, it's the largest size field um, and certainly the best candidate, we think, if, if for synthetic turf, sir, synthetic turf surface. Um, so, we, again, we just wanted to show you the overall plan here. There, there would be quite a, a few land development hurdles to get through with the high school site. Um, don't know the impact that Greenwood would have, certainly that William Penn or 25th Street would have. Those are all question marks as it relates to stormwater, as it relates to PennDOT approval. So it's very difficult at this point to put a number on those type of improvements, okay? Um, so looking a little closer in at what a potential stadium site could be. Could I just say, excuse me? Yes, sir. I, I just want to mention that that is a valuable, important piece of information um, that I'm sorry is not available to us tonight because that's really uh, critical as we look at these sites and uh, hope to move in one direction or another. Uh, is is it is that inappropriate to ask for uh, estimate costs for the traffic changes that might need to occur for this site? Uh, is, is there no one who could give us a ballpark figure of um, what this might entail? Well, Mr. Reinhardt, we would have to start the land development process and get those agencies engaged, PennDOT, the township. Um, it's very difficult at this point to assume what might be required, what might not be required. So uh, I think it would be almost impossible tonight to come in front of you with a figure that is a... I'm not, well, I'm thinking this should have been part of the conversations up until tonight. And coming here with some idea of what changes need to be made in that traffic pattern. So, and, and the traffic patterns around the, around the perimeter there. So uh, I'm not expecting you to sit here and offer a, an estimate, but I would have expected that some type of understanding of the cost of that would have been placed here before us. So well, we do have we do have a line item allowance on the high school site for those types of improvements. Again, it's it's an estimate. It's it's a very preliminary line item number, so it will change. But we do have a placeholder at least at this point to include, you know, what what those costs might be. Well, Arif, you've been involved in lots of projects. I guess what I would ask you is. Um, Looking at that site, looking at what we're th we would think about doing, are are we looking at five million in in costs for studies and traffic pattern pattern changes, or do you think it's going to be more uh, cl closer to ten? I mean, is there some uh, type of reference that you could offer this group tonight? So I looked at these cost estimates with Josh, and we worked on it um, as late as, uh, I guess, Sunday, right? <laughs> and uh, we do have a line item here, Mr. Reinhardt, that I think is a reasonable line item <coughs> to carry at this point. I think... Um, what is it? Right now, we're carrying a line item of $1 million. You believe $1 million will cover the costs to alter the the traffic patterns in and around 25th Street to accommodate this project. One million. We have a line item for one million. It's, I, I'm being honest with you, Mr. Reinhardt, it's very impossible for us to say that we believe that's the number. And the reason I'm saying that is because I think there are approaches to this option whereby we have to really look at what is the traffic impact to this site that it is not already seeing on a regular basis daily. 
because depending on what we're going to use the stadium for, the critical days are, of course, the Saturday football games, correct? Friday. Friday night Late. football games. And the question would be, what happens to the rest of the traffic at the high school at that point? And the other question that I'd have to ask is, you know, what is the specific time of the traffic movements relative to peak times? Because really all PennDOT cares about and all the township cares about is the impact on peak traffic hours, okay? That's why schools, um, a lot of times schools have really tough times because we're bringing, everyone's coming in usually at the peak times and they're leaving usually almost at the peak times. Now, high schools, you try to make really strong arguments because a lot of high schools are dismissing, you know, before three o'clock, and you're sort of out of those peak travel times, which is what PennDOT looks at. So really, the problem is we haven't done that exercise, and it's not a very simple exercise to do. And as Josh said, we'd have to review that with the approval agencies, which would be PennDOT and the township, to really see. So I think, you know, we could strategically orchestrate activities here that would hopefully have a minimal impact on those peak times. Um, you know, so, I, so I'm, I'm being somewhat, um, I think, positive. I don't think the million dollar number is excessive. I also don't think it's something that'll be completely zero. So, you know, I think you were using much higher numbers. If you would like to use your numbers, I would probably say they'd be very, very safe. But I think our number that we put in, we didn't want to over-exaggerate the number. Because of the strategies I just said, I think we can kind of work a plan where we have minimal impact to those peak travel times. How much uh, would you say it would cost for us to put a light in at Greenwood? What, what would that cost be? Um, can you I don't estimate know. that at all? Yeah, I mean, I mean what a does a traffic light generally cost a minute? Typical, a traf just getting a traffic light in is like a, uh, 250,000 right off the bat without All right. without so, road without turning lanes yeah. road improvements okay. but i'm saying that your million dollar estimate seems a bit off in that if it only if it takes a quarter of a million dollars to put in a street light which is a, a light which is absolutely going to have to happen at greenwood how would we expect that it will only cost a million dollars to do the traffic study and perhaps add lanes uh, to the other two entrances and exits at the school property. Well, what I'm saying is I, I believe that we wouldn't need to. I hope you don't we think we would need to? Uh, well, because again, we're coming Friday night, right? So like all yeah. the regular traffic of the uh, students, teachers, buses coming in, that's not happening at that time, correct? Well, no, I'm not so sure. Well, I would say to you that uh, there are s particular times when there are other activities going on at the high school. Is that fair to say? Uh, Mr. Perkusak, can you help us with, um, in addition to a football game, uh, what might else be occurring in the fall there? Well, you, have, at that? you have girls tennis going on. Girls tennis. You have field hockey. At that time. And soccer. Yep. They start at 4 o'clock on a Friday, yep. so they go on to about 6.30 or 7. Right. And the football people usually are there between 4.30 and 5 o'clock. They start coming into the stadium. The spectators definitely by 5.30. Right. So you, you have a major <coughs> overlap of parking already there even before the football people yeah. decide to come. Yeah. And even volleyball. Now volleyball's in the gym, but there's still maybe 50, 60 cars parked out in somewhere mm. that are taking up parking and spaces. I just yeah, asked I mean, a question I'll, about I'll, the I'll, amount of sign because it just seems tremendously low to me um, given what we might have, what we've looked at. At the Palmer School, we've got a, uh, how much do we have built into our budget at the Palmer School to adjust the traffic pattern there? Can somebody help me with that? Anybody remember what that was? I can't recall the number. I think it's like less than half a million. Less, less than half a million? I think it's like 350,000. Okay, but, but to my point again, um, that is a, um, relatively, e well, I should say that, I'm not an engineer, but that is an action that has to take place in order to access the elementary school at Palmer on that, uh, on that site. We have to modify that. I think one million 
um, is not going to be close to what it would take to alter the traffic pattern. My humble opinion is, and given I, the fact that we'd have to put a light in there. And I, I just I, think we can't. We will not. Uh, I will not argue with you. So I, I'm happy to say that. You know, we would be happy to look at that a lot closer. I think it needs a lot more information. So to really do this, you're going to have to do traffic counts. Uh, we're really going to have to kind of do an analysis, you know, right. rather than yeah. what we're trying to do but here. But we're, we're accountable to all that. So absolutely, all that, well, right? uh, yeah. absolutely, we well, have to we have to do all that to really answer this. I question. think to help you out, it, checking with Palmer, you may find. I believe Lou Pector was looking at putting a light in there, and John at one point. Was there a request from Lou about us even opening that driveway up going on to Greenwood? Uh, there was, uh, yes, we received a phone call, I think, um, for the last 12 months, whether or not we would be interested in opening up Greenwood to th that point and allowing traffic through. And I spoke to a number of individuals who cl clearly said that would not be in the district's interest right now, given our circumstances. Uh, to have that traffic light and allow through traffic uh, on our property. I, I think both of your points and your, your point, Mr. Reinhardt, is very clear. Clearly, there is a completely different traffic movement that is going to occur here that has to be studied much closer before we um, sign off on, on this plan and uh, sign off on some budgets. Thank so, you. So I, I agree I, with that. Thanks. I, I yeah. just wanted to mention. John. Yeah. Because if you're looking at that plan right there, right now, yep. the other upper end of it where you're looking at the corner, there's only an out now coming out of the parking lot to the left. To, um, up here, to, where, to, to, to 25th left, Street? Right. Yes. Going, going on to Williams Avenue. There's only an out now. Oh, yes, that's correct. There's only an out coming out only now. An, right only an out. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Correct. Turn coming on. Is anybody, have you guys even yeah. bothered to be here on uh, Wednesday night before one. a bonfire? Can we go in? Come, come in if I can't come out. That's what you're going to get. Right because you have right 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 going to be right here. Parking lot's going to be full. We're going to have huge problems because the business is still left. We can make it work right into the lot. We're taking up parking lot five spots now. You do five football games on Friday night. Now we're in Wilson's territory with Easton vehicles, and we got pure hell to deal with. And if you don't think you're gonna do a traffic study, this is Palmer Township. They're gonna run you through the coal <laughs> to get three more lanes out. You're not gonna get away with this. They're gonna make you spend our money, the taxpayers' money, to expand that out. And I don't know how much limestone and everything else is gonna come to track right now that you're gonna have to dig into the mm -hmm. So John's estimate of five to 10, may be more realistic than we're looking at because, you know, I know you haven't looked at it, but I'm just throwing it out here as a guy who remembers what that, pump, that track looked like and trying to get football out here with that kind of traffic. Bless you, my child. It's going to be pure hell. Sorry, I didn't mean to take over. Good discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so just getting back to the, um, the view of the venue itself, it's very similar in nature to the uh, 12th Street site. Again, 4,000 um, home side seating capacity, 1,500 on the visitors. This would incorporate a separate new uh, field house. We kept, for the purpose of comparison, we kept the toilet room um, sizes and uh, field house size the same. Um, some uh, grading, some more grading challenges would be present on this site as far as getting the site to the point where it can accept footings um, for the bleachers, especially on the visitor side. A little bit trickier access with um, concrete steps going down from uh, the, the, the entrance drive that goes past the front door here, okay? Um, but again, you know, vehicular access could take place through um, a combination of uh, paved access routes into the, the site. Um, you know, the field house would accommodate certain sports. I think some would still need to be located within the existing high school. Obviously, we can't accommodate every, you know, boys and girls sport for every season, but um, the, certainly the football field house and some of the other ancillary rooms would be included in that freestanding um, field house. 
Okay. How much space do we take away on the west side where the concession is being built in the field house of that field because that's the practice football field that currently isn't uh, it's the JV and varsity practice football field. So we have about 120 players on one field that isn't even a full football field. Are we going to take any more of that away for that practice football field? So, where that so road, where the road is on the west. Yeah, if basically if you see this sort of darker, you know, shadow okay. here, that's kind of like this guy over here. So it's really not too much of an encroachment towards that area. Perhaps that access road might have to be reconfigured a bit, you know, if maybe find a different way to get to it from, say, the tennis court side of the high school. But um, it does not appear to be much of an encroachment onto that adjacent okay. practice field there. Okay. All right. Yeah, we do have some space carved out on either side over here. There's also space, again, in, in the corners for some, uh, some other smaller freestanding concession areas. All right, so um, task one was to start looking at the sketch plans. Task two was to start preparing some estimated budget numbers, again, in a very preliminary nature. Um, you know, a lot of the uh, site improvement costs are the same, especially as it relates to lighting, to concessions, toilet spaces, um, seating capacity, obviously. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is, regardless of the site chosen, that high school field and track surface do need to be repaired and replaced in the very near future. Okay, so when you we're considering costs, please keep in mind that uh, there's that additional money that is necessary for the existing turf field and the track surface, okay? Also uh, to be considered is if it were to move to the high school, what happens with the Cottingham parcel? Is it something that needs to be maintained? Obviously, it would have to be repaired in some capacity, so those are some other costs that would need to be factored in uh, to an overall budget and cost determination at some point, okay? So if you look at the, uh, the Cottingham side, that uh, total number there of um, 10 million, 10.8, again, is with a natural grass surface and without that adjacent parking lot being improved. So to put in the under drainage, to do the additional stormwater management, the subgrade and the synthetic surface, you can figure about $1.5 million um, of cost for that synthetic surface. Reconstruction of the parking lot, again, that's based on a very broad uh, sort of square foot number of just over a million dollars, um, which is that, that section that we we're just talking about previously with the uh, Vanderveer Park, okay? <coughs> um, over on the high school site, um, you can see that there are parking improvements that are included. Again, we're short, we would be short on, uh, <coughs> by the definition of the zoning ordinance, what is required for on-site parking. So parking improvements would be necessary. Um, the new turf surface, again, at the soccer field is included in this number. That's something that would be required, again, if we displace other sports with football. Uh, PennDOT <coughs> improvements, that's that $1 million sort of placeholder allowance at this point. And another big um, unknown or very difficult to identify with very much certainty is utility extension and stormwater. Obviously, um, with the improvements, especially with parking becoming involved, if, if there is a, a synthetic surface now becoming considered an impervious surface, there's going to be quite a few uh, stormwater improvements that are necessary. So again, that's at this point a $1.5 million um, allowance amount for that, okay? So really, and Josh, when you look at it, you have the 10838, but like you said, you have to add the 975 and the 260 to that. 
and because at the last meeting we talked the importance of moving the group from over at the middle school campus over here, you'd still have that additional turf field, so that would be the additional 1.5. So that really brings that up to 13,573 then. Right, and again, that um, the high school costs would need to be added to the high school side of the equation as well. They're not included um, currently on, on the right side. And the increase in the seating cost, you said, was what, about 9,000? 9,000. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We don't, we, no, we don't have a... a a breakdown for that, Bob, if, if they were to, to become larger seats. We'd have to go through and, and look at the entire structure and how much additional area is needed for those bleachers. Okay. So you need to come back with that. Yeah. And excuse me if I miss this, but um, if we move the stadium to the high school, we have to add fields. A field, right? Because we're going to end up losing a field. If, two if, two right. fields. If we don't, it will make some teams play this, the multiple days in a row because it, the league yes. sets a schedule. Okay. And you'd have to, we wouldn't be able to play, say, home field hockey on a Monday if we have home football games. Correct. So if they're scheduled to play, either we got to send them away so they lose a home game mm -hmm. or try to, if the opponent allows, to move it to Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Well, they may already have a game scheduled for Wednesday or vice versa. So they end up playing multiple days in a row without a rest right. because Mondays and Fridays in the fall right. will be heavily affected when you have the home games. And, Jim, is that because, like other districts, they have just more area to spread all this out at their schools? Um, yes and no. Uh, it's the rectangular field. There's no other rectangular field on our campus except the lighted soccer field, which is grass now. Right and the, the current turf field. That's all we have is two. Right, but uh, I mean other districts other have Other schools have more surface area. Uh, Liberty sends their field hockey team a block away to play on a grass field some days. Uh, that would be another option. You're gonna displace somebody to maybe yeah. one of a township field, or go back to what we're doing currently with girls across, you'd send somebody school. on a Monday or a Friday to the middle school, right. and they right. have to go off campus. Now they end up being at two different places. Yeah. So. So where, where I was heading with this uh, question is this estimate for the high school does not include additional, the creation of additional fields. It, it does, it includes the addition of, of a synthetic surface on the existing soccer field uh, location. Yeah. That would be the, um, this, this call out to the left. It's 1.5 million down there, John. What, what it doesn't include on the left-hand side is the addition of that other field. Yes, okay, fine, all right. So, uh, so, uh, so we're, as I see it, I don't know, I could be wrong, Jim, you're the person to say this, but um, with a move of, of the stadium to the high school, we clearly will need to keep some of our varsity and JV sports playing at the middle school. Is that, is that fair to say? Or put those teams at a disadvantage and they've got to play multiple days in a row and hope the opponents are willing to move the games off of the, the league scheduled dates. Yeah. Uh, is there room for an additional field out at the high school? Does anybody know? Not a rectangular field. Not a rectangular case. field. So, all right. So I, I just throw that out. There's an a point uh, and a difference between the two sites. Okay, thank you. We, and we actually had what four four baseball fields here, or two softball and two. We have yeah, we have two softball and two baseball. Yeah. That didn't even happen. Correct. <laughs> and that is to accommodate three levels of baseball and three levels of softball. Mm -hmm. Back's a big unknown. 
I mean, yeah, I don't know what Charlie Strim plays for the exit in Academy. But that cost him millions. We could very well get caught with that. Plus, well, so I have a, a little bit of concern, you know, disrupting that area with all the sinkhole problems that we had in the past. Lord knows we start going in there, and then all of a sudden, everything just falls through. Can happen. Yeah. We're sitting on, and we all know that entire track is sinkhole city. Yeah. Start digging it up, next thing you know, I don't even know how you start to fix that. And the biggest the fear I have by putting that sand out there is what happens if it opens up one of the corners and we got 4,500 people there watching a the football game. Just a pure liability is not worth the risk, folks. I, I also have a problem with taking this out of the, the Easton area. You know, there's a lot of students and parents and people in our community that just love to walk to that game and, and have it there. So, I mean, we're not, we're not even talking about that yet, but we have to think about that. Our community loves to have that game there, and that really does help grow um, that territory, that, that overtown area. We talked about that the last meeting, Billy, that Jimmy can chime in on that. The walk in just in the neighborhood is phenomenal. We have more kids in our games than we have in any place that we visited because it's a neighborhood scenario. Right, and now you're making now it better for them. you got to walk through those rocks, yeah. so you're going to lose that number. Well, and now you're going to make the stadium at Cunningham better for them. You might even attract more people that says, I'm not going there because I don't feel safe going to the back. I mean, I, I think we, we identified all of that at the last meeting yeah. when we heard from the individuals um, that were put on the committee. Um, and and you know, that, that was a very important exercise. I think this is also a very important exercise to be able to take a look at the options because you're seeing for the first time in black and white or in beautiful color that Josh has provided us that, um, you know, there are distinct advantages in terms of facility use as well as um, advantages in cost with one option versus another. If you don't go through that exercise, you would never know it. And I think that may help us to to formulate, you know, what's what's the best option then. I have a question about the lighting for Cottingham. Are we saying that's that would be replaced for nine hundred thousand or they have to be upgraded? Yes, they would be replaced. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. The Cottingham um, is there also, are, is the costs in there about doing advertising and able to put um, advertising up on some part of that? Um, we included uh, okay. for the scoreboard a price of $100,000. So the intent there was it would be a structure that would accommodate at least some type of banners or advertising space. Okay. Um, also, I just got another question. In case Bob decides to move those uh, seats to 22 inches <laughs> and we have to go up a row, um, how much can you factor in how much extra that's going to be? I mean, not now, but in the future, can we get that cost Well, it, it would actually be an increase. I think we did the calculation last week about a 20% increase in um, the area and the cost associated with that. So where were we here? And you'd go up higher, you said? We would, we would have to look at it, go. Billy. Okay. Um, what, what would make more sense? Because the higher we go, obviously, the deeper we need to get, right. and that would encroach into the parking lot or towards the field. So we would really have to look at some options as far as the best orientation, if that were to be the direction. But that would increase the cost that we have here, obviously. Yes. Yeah. So between the turf and natural grass, we talked about that. So what you're telling me is if we go to turf at Cunningham, we will get more use out of the stadium than we do right now with grass for other sports to be played. Is that that would be correct? accurate, yes. Okay. I guess my question on that is what additional cost would there be to open up Cottingham and to put whether we would have to utilize security or busing or those other additional costs that would go into it if we put additional I think what we found is students after school uh, attend to stay and to support their friends and teammates and, and 
after school and their practice is over, walk out and watch the teams on campus. Currently, girls lacrosse experiences that, where when they're up to middle school, very few kids get in their car and say, hey, let's go up to the girls lacrosse game and support them. They lose a lot of their student support and even te teacher faculty support because people just aren't gonna drive up there to watch the game, unfortunately. Um, if everybody was here on campus, except for football, that creates a, a better atmosphere for those kids and those athletes that we're not busing people uh, different places. Mm -hmm. And in that night, uh, if you're gonna have games at night down at Cottingham uh, in the spring, we probably should have a security guard down there or two, custodian to clean, which we currently don't do anything down there in, in the off season. Mm -hmm. uh, those costs I think would go up a little bit. I think too then, right now we have trainers here at the high school in one central location and at the middle school. So we'd be probably talking about having another trainer available for any athletic events because they obviously would need a trainer down there as well. The cost to put the turf in and maintain it. You know you're going to have to buy a groomer. Mm -hmm. Grass and turf. Yeah, that would be included in that. I, I, you know, I, I know that various high schools um, piggyback off of each other and bring a groomer in, and then he takes care of a number of high school synthetic fields. That's always an option. Well, what I'm saying is that's that's how they normally do it to try and right. save on the cost. <laughs> okay. What would be the long-term cost if you go turf to grass? Ten years, you got to replace that turf. That's another million dollars. So then the estimate that's listed here is 975 is a little bit low, we're saying. At 975 to replace the turf that's already, already at the high school, am I correct? Right, yeah, back. so. We're not talking, now you got two turf fields, if you do that. You got a turf field at Cunningham, you got a turf field out here. Right. You're doing them both approximately at the same time, correct? Right, but. 10 years from now, $3 million, it just increased. Am I not, did I miss something here? Yeah, it's, it's different when you're converting from grass to turf as we would be at the high school soccer field. That number includes the necessary under drainage and the base associated with the turf surface. When it's a replacement, most of that, almost all of it remains in place. Right. Stone bedding, the, 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 the piping beneath it, so the cost of, of the surface itself and some other adjustments would be that 975. I just, well, I to, I just wanted to get that point out there. Now you're looking at two turf fields compared to a grass field. It cannot be a million dollars to replace stock. And actually, Carrie, if we put that other turf out here, it would either be three turf fields or two turf fields in oh, one I'm side field. That. You're right now, three yeah. turf fields. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, can't forget that one. Holy <laughs> Anybody hear a ching ching going off in here, folks? <laughs> Carrie, you running again? <laughs> Ten <Hell> years. No. <laughs> that's foolish. Oh, that's just me. That's a lot of money for turf. So there's six home games, correct? Five. Five. If you get playoffs, you add okay. that to it. There's about 15. All right, just that. <laughs> <laughs> Usually between between 13 and 15 football games a season. You're right. Between okay. playoff games, if it's a good year, could be 15 mm -hmm. or 16 between the Monday night games mm -hmm. and the others. Um, and we have one or two of the youth football games down there during the year. And we strategically play them on the grass surface now uh, that doesn't impact the grass. And we can usually allow one game a year for them to use that down at Cottingham okay. with grass mm -hmm. surface. And no other teams or sports use Cottingham grass field for any regular. Correct. The phys ed, phys ed class is right down at Paxinosa. Pax does. Okay, All can good. come over and use it. Okay. Correct. And is it is it open as a green space for the neighborhood or is it gated no. off and? Gated okay. off and closed. Yeah. Right. That's locked. Yeah. Okay. Only time that here's the other thing you might want to take in consideration with Cottingham. Jimmy, remember this: if there's a bad accident. They will land a helicopter on our field. Yeah, the firemen have a, firemen a key for that. Key for yeah. So, Jimmy, you won't be able to do that with turf. I 
think one of the things when we talk about the cost and stuff too is I'd like to have a better understanding if from Jimmy or Mike possibly is the revenue that we bring in from that field to offset some of the costs that we would be putting out. Yeah, I think football est estimated roughly is between 130 and 150,000 a year football will bring in, including Thanksgiving. I think Mr. Simmons, if we add it up, we add Thanksgiving into that somewhere close to maybe 150. Um, then the other sports bring in about another 50 at the most. Jim, do that again. Just our, just the games we play at Cunningham would bring in football in general brings in, I don't know what the exit, like the home games alone, 200,000 is roughly what we bring in. Anywhere between 25 and 30,000 the other teams bring in. So you can go as high as 170 with football alone counting Thanksgiving. If you take Thanksgiving out of it, probably 125, 130. So I would say 125 is a good estimate for Cottingham alone home that, football games. Is that the cost of security and everything else you got to pay for? Well, that's just revenue. That's just ticket revenue. That's not yeah. what we pay coaches and maintain and no way you take all those expenses out. All that's just expenses. revenue tickets alone. The answer to your question is we can put something together and how it's being operated now and uh, calculate the expenses right. for each game. Do you have any ideas on how we could bring in more revenue from a new stadium at Conningham? I don't want to say ticket prices. Uh, but, you know, currently, the online ticket sales, mm -hmm. uh, we incur the uh, convenience fee mm -hmm. <laughs> that we, we do that. Yeah. Uh, if we were to change that, the people who order tickets online, instead of mm -hmm. us incurring that, we'd get the straight 5 or $6 fee, mm -hmm. and they would pay an extra 50 or 60 cents on that ticket. Would that bring in some additional revenue? It would. Mm -hmm. uh, last time we raised tickets, we raised them and we incurred that cost mm -hmm. to soften that blow a little bit mm -hmm. for the online ticket sales uh, for that convenience. That's something that could. Yeah. Uh, the advertising, as we said, yep. uh, some of the new replay boards out there have digital um, advertising mm -hmm. and you could actually get a student or two that could run that board to put different advertisements up throughout the game and whatever that fee you would charge uh, we'd have to figure that out. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I think Whitehall's exploring that currently. Mr. Fivzak, um, I don't know much about how this works, but maybe you do. What about the possibility of, with the athletic teams, is there a way we can partner like colleges do with, with Nike or Adidas? Um, I, I don't know how that, that works. Helps, that just helps it. you with uniforms, but the cost of those <laughs> high brand name uniforms, mm -hmm. you pay up front. Um, I don't think that's beneficial for us. We do a bid process. So through the bid process, we, we get decent bids on a variety of styles and companies instead of being locked into one. Okay. All right. Thank you. When you gave the ticket prices too, 125 to 130,000, that's not less the, do we pay uh, like an entertainment fee or whatever to the city? Oh yeah. And how much is, what's the I want to say on average, Mr. Simonette, about $10,000 a year yeah, we pay the city uh, for that uh, amusement tax on every ticket we sell within the city of Easton, which includes the Thanksgiving game and our home football games. I do think that a, uh, an, a comprehensive look at the advertising that could occur at the stadium, at a new stadium in either location, is going to yield us um, a, additional revenue and could be, especially if we went to the, um, the digital um, boards, that could be, I think, significant. Mm -hmm. I would also offer up the, something that we've talked about in the past with our boards um, and that is that once the district has carved out a future, in other words, we've chosen a site and we've sort of laid out the vision, I think there c could be, well, there should be an effort to see if we've got people who are uh, connected to the Eastern brand who are willing to help us with this project financially. I've certainly had a number of conversations with others in the past who believe that there are 
many people who would assist us um, in revitalizing or redoing the stadium. Um, so I do think that's something else that we should. Oh, like a, like are, you, are you trying to say the word donors? <laughs> yeah, like a, yeah, like a, uh, Mr. Reinhardt, like a, like a buy a brick program. That, that kind of thing. Do. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. Get yourself, so, you get your name or organization engraved. I don't know how much that those efforts would yield, but um, you know that certainly would be something that we should explore to try to help c uh, lower the cost, cost. here uh, at either site. Mr. Yeah, Ryan, minimal. Yes. Have you other options? Bethlehem has Banco Field. We could enter into a contract with someone who might want to have the field named after them for a certain amount of money for a five-year contract. And if we wanted to in, yeah. try something else and want to try with fundraising, maybe we find an organization that has that's already tax exempt and have them use their numbers as a tax exempt donation process that comes in. I know one, but I'm not going to mention it. We might want to go down that avenue because anytime you can give a tax rate to somebody, they're more willing to give more money. Hmm. And as long as there's a tax EIN number, they get a tax rate. But that's what. Even still, like anybody else, it's a plus. Yeah. And actually, Kerry, that's already set up hmm. through the foundation for Easton. Yes. Yeah. It's it's not a lot of money, but currently, we bend over backwards to give season ticket holders the same seat that they've had for 50, 60 years, some people, and don't dare move them. Uh, I don't want to say a seat license, but if somebody wants the same reserve seat back year after year, could there be a fee attached to that to keep that a minimal fee? Uh, nothing extravagant. It's an option. I, I've never heard it done in high school, high school sports for that. But then again, we're one of the few that do reserve seat tickets. Um, there are also some options to explore. Because currently, if I move them left or right one seat, they know it, and they get very, very, very upset. Where if they don't pay that convenience fee, and I need to move them to the right to squeeze an order of three in, I could do that without mm -hmm. major issue because they really don't have that seat fee or license. Um, I don't know what kind of revenue that would bring in. Up there, you got listed for hundred thousand for scoreboard. How big is that scoreboard? Any idea, roughly? No, it, it's, well, not maybe not Nazareth, but um, it's bigger than a standard scoreboard for the purpose of creating advertising space. Yeah, is it, is it digital? Do it, could it have poles extended on it, say like they got Lafayette, and put six side panels on it and rent them out? You could probably fit three on either side, yeah, depending yes, on how sir. big you want to make it. you know how much money they, I'm not going to say this, you know how much money is being pulled in for just that advertising on that board chair and you light it up and leave it up. That's money. That's free money, folks. If you're putting up a pole, it costs you some money. You got free, whoever advertises, Coke, Pepsi, or whatever company, that's free money. 25, 50 grand. That's revenue, folks. Okay. Going back to the plans and the dollars, other comments, thoughts? Carrie, we heard a lot from you. <laughs> what about the rest of the group sitting there? You're talking about the the, the price difference? A anything, any questions, comments I mean, I, on I it? I think it's, well, I mean, I, I think everyone knows how I feel. I, I talked about it last time about yeah. the stadium and um, Mrs. Weiss, I mean, and you weren't at the last meeting, but w I had, that was, the basis of my argument for keeping it there is because it's um, it's such a big part of that community. If you moved it out of there, mm -hmm. you're going to lose half your fan base. Mm -hmm. And you know those the people from and I grew up there. I grew up down there. They're not going to get in a car and drive out to the high school to watch a game. That's the heart and soul of of Easton Easton football is Friday nights at Cottingham Stadium down at 12th Street. And it always has been. And I mean, I sit here and I look at the, just look at the cost difference. I mean, there, there's, I don't even think there's an argument. I mean, you're, you're looking at a $5 million difference. You're looking roughly at two. 
at his, two? You got, yeah, you've got to add the other numbers in there that he didn't put in the total. He didn't add Only in. if you go to turf, it's two. No, no, forget the turf. It's 10-8, right? You still, have to, you still have to look at replacing the high school turf field. You still have to look at replacing the high school track and adding the other field out here, which is another 1.5. So that comes up to about 13.5. To keep it at Cunningham? If you keep it at Cunningham, yes. So keeping it at Cunningham is about 13.5. Keep uh, moving it to the high school is 15.4. I thought the additional turf field was if we moved the football field here, then we needed the additional turf no, field. No, it was to move over after the last meeting. That's the discussion. It was to take the group from over at the middle school, over at the campus, and move them here. Well, that, that would be if we stayed with football at Cottingham. Yes. We could make a surface here. That's the reason f uh, girls lacrosse can't play here is the field is not striped for that sport. And there's no lights. That's right. There's no lights. So right now it's dark, and the last group of, of teams can't practice. So by putting lights on the current turf field and just putting the new surface back down, that brings girls lacrosse over here. With, be with the other teams. Okay, so they just have to add the lighting for 900,000. Yeah, the second here. field would come as if we brought football here. Then we need the second turf field okay. for the, uh, the sports being displayed. So correcting me, it removes 1.5 and adds 900,000, which brings it down to just a hair under 13, about 12.9. Josh, can you? Can you uh, look I, at the I'm confused. I'm sorry. Clear this up for us? Mm -hmm. What was that question? Wow. It's right if there. We, if we keep Cottingham, Cottingham. Cottingham and we keep it grass field, what is the difference, base difference from not going to the high school or keeping it at Cottingham with natural turf? Keeping it at Cottingham with natural turf right. would yep. be the 10, 10, eight. Eight. No, no, Josh, you got to add in, are we going to not redo the high school track? No, no, those, as I, those have to happen regardless. So you would add those numbers to both the left and the right. So that's not included then in the other figures you have up here, you're saying? That's why it's in red. They got to be added to both. Correct. So even doing the field on the right-hand side, you don't have that added in is what you're saying? Correct. That, that field that you see there, the, the turf, that's for the soccer field conversion from grass to turf to create that additional space for the sports that are that are displaced okay. or back to back. So either way, replacing the high school turf out here or putting it in is 975. Yes. Yeah. But and doing the track, that also has to be added into both sides, you're saying? Both sides. Correct. Yeah. And then so the only difference is you have to add 90,000 over to the Cunningham side to put the additional lights up out here, the 900 rather. Uh, we do have lights on both. Um, lights are in. Field lighting. Lighting. Field lighting is included on both, yes. For the additional lights out here on the field, too, at the high school? That field has a or the, the, I, No, I thought no, no, Jim no, no, just no. said we had to add lighting. Oh. No, it's, it's in the bid, though, for the high school turf. It's already in there. It's already in there. So literally what you do, you add high school turf and resurfacing to both sides, regardless so right. 975 and the 260 would be added to both bids regardless of decision. Correct. And that includes the lights for out here at the high school for on the new field. Yep. Right. That, that's in there under Eastern Area High School regardless of that decision. No, I, I think if I'm understanding Mr. Fainel's question is does the cost within the red box include lighting? Is that the question? For the f additional field out here? No, there's already lighting at the soccer field. Then why did we say we would need lighting out here? We're, 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 we need lighting. If Cottingham stays where it's at, we're going to redo the existing turf field and track. You have to add lights to that in order for girls lacrosse to come over here. Right. Because you don't have lights on that field currently. So if they come over here, you get a three to five practice slot, you get five to seven. So that's track and boys lacrosse. After that, it's dark and girls can't practice. So that's why you need to put lights on the current turf track. Okay, so that, that's facility. regardless, again, that's regardless of location. Right. Well, we okay. Don't have that. So, yeah, so that, that correct. That is not that's included. Missing. So you have to add nine in. So yes. it's 11, 11 7 then versus 15 4. Correct. Plus the other two numbers. For lights, yeah. I'm totally confused. No, what, what Mr. Go ahead. The, the lights <laughs> on the turf field are a result because we want to move girls lacrosse over. 
Right. That's, that's, that's my not, understanding, yes, yes. That's not predicated on doing anything with Cottingham. That's just a choice we choose to make. That should not be compared with the cost comparison to the high school field or to Cottingham. Correct. It should still be 10-8 to 15-4. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Just Cottingham Stadium. When we talked the last time, that's what we were looking for. Mike made a statement before we left that no matter what we do, the life of the turf out here is done. We got to replace it, correct? And then we threw in that you need lights to bring lacrosse over. Mm -hmm. That had absolutely nothing to do with Cottingham because that's got to be done anyway, correct? Yep. Case over. It's still $10 million. That's something else just to fix the field to get it up. That's got to be replaced no matter what you do. It's still $5 million more. Really. That's what it comes down to is it's $5 million yep. difference. Okay. Five no matter how you right. and you're And you're also playing on, on grass, which, I mean, ask any football player. We, we would much rather play on, on a grass surface because it's safer for kids to play on grass, especially our grass. We play on some grass fields that are crappy. <laughs> our grass field is, is phenomenal, and it's a much safer surface for the kids to play on, you can ask Harold Reynolds where he would rather play. Would you rather play on grass or turf? Grass. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, to me, to me, it's a no-brainer. You're saving $5 million. You're keeping it in the heart of the city where it belongs, and you're, you're playing on grass, and it's $5 million cheaper. And I don't. And Correct, it is. There, there are less injuries. <laughs> well, the other, other issue, <laughs> right. grass over turf, less injuries. Yeah. It is. Other comments? I'll ask where do we go from here, uh, Josh? I mean, do we still need clarification on things? To refine these or, or you know, what, what direction do we want to go? What's, what's the next step is where I'm coming from. I think the only items that we had here to, to go back and look at were obviously the traffic, which, you know, that, that's a whole project by itself, but we will do what, whatever you ask us to do, all right? Um, and the seat sizes to look at that number, you know, and see what, what impact that is. I think those are the two items we had that we didn't answer today, I believe, but might be wrong. Not that we well, don't. I, oh, go ahead. I, no, I, I got to be honest with you. Seat size, no matter what option you choose, is going to be Have an to be additional free. cost. Right. Yeah. So th we already know if you're going to take a closer look at your uh, traffic situation and, and all that that surrounds, it's not going to go down. It, I mean, it's going it's going to end up increasing the cost of that option. So I don't know. I mean, just personally, my opinion, I don't think it's worth doing an exercise in that if we know that the cost of that's going to go up, and if you do the seats, the cost is going to go up on both options anyway. Correct. Yeah, you're going to have an escalation of cost potentially for your, your traffic improvements, things like that, because I don't believe it's going to go down. Right. Yeah, your differential is at least going to be the $5 million there. Right. When you're looking at cost and people said about going up higher to get extra rows to make mm -hmm. uh, bigger seats, can we go lengthwise with the bleachers further because currently we don't have to end directly near the goal line you know right we could actually probably go longer if that saves money versus going higher and creating a larger bleacher footprint if you want to call it that go further down the end zone line because our students are at the end with the band maybe that's an option to move one direction or the other yeah absolutely we can look at that as well no problem. can i add something in from before um when it comes to practicing at the same time, uh, we were just at a scrimmage in North Hunterdon on Friday, and there was a ton of kids on the turf. Uh, it was track, and boys lacrosse were actually practicing at the same time. Um, it is feasible for us to practice at the same time as track. We've been working it out for the last two weeks because of the weather. Um, we have those big nets, you know, that kind of block off each side of the the track you could put those up and it is feasible that two sports could practice at the same time if needed if need be i mean coach Warner and i have been working together and it's been great for the last two weeks so 
because we don't throw it as hard as the boys do, so we're not whipping his track kids while they're running their laps. Uh, so it's been working out. So it is something that is feasible uh, to do. You could have two teams practicing at the same time. Like, obviously, yes, you, you do want to have stadium lights out there, but it is something that is possible. We've been doing it for the last two weeks. So just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, if I can, when you ask about the next steps, <clears throat> we also left last meeting with preliminarily talking about the time frame, the timeline. We're, the original plans, if we stay at Cottingham or anywhere, I guess, or is that if we start at the end of the football season, we'll be able to have it done before the next football season. Is that at either site? Yeah, I, I think that time frame, Mike, works from a construction standpoint. But what we have to do is is back up and see what needs to happen to get to that point. Okay. So, you know, honestly, I think at this point, we're pro we're looking at the 2019 end of season for getting ready with demolition after that season, right. demolition over the winter, starting construction in the spring, and then finishing up by the so following two season. Two more seasons on cutting. Yeah. So you know that time frame works. And the reason why I asked that, because there was some talk that we needed to make a decision soon so you can start that planning. So that relieves that a little criteria. A, a little bit, but yeah. okay. just keeping in mind, again, this is a land development. Yep. Um, and on either site, it's going to go through through planning commission and but, board of yeah. supervisors. So yeah. you know, I was we, worried we don't want to lose sight of that. By April. So yeah, that's and, why and I think that's the thing that just got cleared up right. as right. how many seasons you know, are being projected on the existing site. And if it is two, then, then you've got some time. Why, but why do we need, do we, do we want to drag this out any longer? I, mean, I agree. I was just going to say that. Why? I'm not sensing, I'm, you know, I wasn't at the first meeting, but I'm not sensing from anyone a, a compelling mm. desire to move to the high school location. So I, I feel like you know, in the best interest of the public, too, I think we should make this decision. For the safety of the public and going to on. these games. And I agree in terms of, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, talking about obviously the traffic patterns possibly being more expensive as well. Is there any way, shape, or form that Cottingham wouldn't be a cheaper option? Now, we don't know the difference. I understand that. But it seems to me like it's Cottingham's not going to jump up $5 million all of a sudden and be an equal contestant here right? it's in terms of cost. So I'm... I'm with you. I'm thinking, I think for them to be able to move forward with plans, they need to stop worrying about two different sites and figure out which site is the most. Yeah. I, and then we well, can ask them to talk about the details of the, t you know, those other things. I would say it, it, there obviously appears to be a consensus here, right? As to I which option is the better one. It, it sounds that way. And uh, can I look at the group down here that we invited to join us and that's their consensus? Well, Cottingham? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Seeing heads not all the way down the road. <laughs> um, can I also add? Public too, Bob. If we're Couple going up with Cottingham, so. which is the recommendation, uh, even though I wasn't asked, um, <laughs> we should also talk about. We know we have to replace that turf field high school, so we might be able to do that before we do even do Cottingham, because we don't have too much life left on that turf. So I think. In conjunction with that, we might want to get that going. Um, if yeah, we decided that we're that's kind of what sparked this committee, Mike. We were to the point this year already that we were ready to get that replaced and kind of put the brakes on it. So certainly for next summer, that could be a summer right. project. Yep. So are are you saying we can put we, this would have to be on the meeting agenda for tomorrow to vote on it or no? no okay. No. Okay. I mean, I mean the place, the location. Mm -hmm. No. No. It just, I, become, it just becomes well, a capital project okay. for the future and. Okay. I'm sorry. So, uh, so, could I just offer up a, yeah. a thought that um, uh, if you take a look at the finances we need to come up with, with uh, obviously with both sites, there is a what does that say? Thirty percent down at the bottom there. Thirty percent. Uh, um, uh, it, would it behoove us at all to have conversations with uh, the yeah. city of Easton? and with Palmer to talk about um, what can you do for us? 
to help us reduce some of those costs? Um, is there, a, a, there's obviously, well, I say there's benefits to both municipalities with uh, the business that this might bring. Um, it, it, is that an appropriate thing to do, to ask between now and the next time um, or not? You can do anything, John, that way. Well, I think at I, some point, at some point that has to be a conversation. Okay. Right. But Cunningham, I think a call to the mayor might be a smart idea to see what he can do. Mm -hmm. no. um, okay. I think at this point, I think we we seem to have the general consensus based on what the committee that we've asked to group here and everything. Um, I'd like to uh, take a time and thank the committee for spending a couple nights with us and everything for your comments and uh, input. And uh, we'll be taking this from here. Our next steps, obviously, are to get things a little more uh, finalized as we look at this, uh, doing some follow-ups, as John has suggested, getting more input from the engineers, and uh, then eventually moving this on to the board to take some various votes on this, as well as Mike will be looking at some of the financing pieces. So I would like to thank you very much for your time and your service. <laughs> I didn't mean to say it that way, Gary, but... That's your decision. Parson, you can help subsidize. Yeah, Parson, thank you. How much you putting in there? It's Terry Myers Field. Yeah. Yeah. No. No? Well, obviously you didn't hit the Powerball, so you can't help. Huh? You didn't hit the Powerball, so you can't help. Okay. So, <laughs> George, that that concludes this portion of the committee. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, we're going to take a, about a five, ten minute break, and then we'll start the uh, capital project. Uh,